The Boeing 737 MAX in recent history is one of the most controversial for a host of reasons. So the question remains, where did Boeing go wrong with such a plane that had so much promise? Welcome back to Globetrotting, your home for frequent analysis on the aviation sector. Today the focus lies on the 737 MAX, an aircraft that promised success, stability, and more. And while it has definitely been a success on the order front, it has, in more ways than one, we've seen severe implications that have resulted in the program being heavily critiqued and more. Let's move to the first chapter of this video, the 737 as an aircraft and how it's limited with the MAX. The Boeing 737 series is one of the most iconic but also essential and fundamental series to grace the skies. Its affordability and also the ability to complete a host of missions mean it has truly been ideal for markets in every corner of the globe, however big or small. But also, in saying that, the 737 has been around for some time, first entering into service in 1968, which means its design is heavily dated, of course being more than half a century old. Since the creation of the 737, the series has changed and also evolved over the years, while keeping to its core. A core that has to be said was very different to what is required nowadays for airliners. Intended to be cheap, the goal for the older 737s was to make the ease of maintaining and man hours needed to a minimum, which worked with the program. By the time we arrived at the 737 MAX, there were issues with the ground clearance for the placement of the engines, primarily as Boeing was focusing on re-engineing the 737NG to make it more efficient and turn it into a MAX. Because of these implications, Boeing needed to move the engine further forward and up on the aircraft. And given the design used has such a dated body, there were limitations with improving, say, the strength of the landing gear and much more. When creating the MAX, Boeing really needed it to just be certified very easily for a rollout to come as soon as possible to customers, and therein lies one of the key issues. Why did Boeing need a rollout so soon, and especially a delivery to customers? Well, it leads us into the next chapter, Airbus and their A320neo. As Airbus announced improvements to its A320 program with the Neo, a new engine option, noting a newer and larger engine would be added, with the addition to pilots not requiring further training where applicable to move from the CO to Neo, there were of course concerns in the Boeing camp that this would really shake up the market. And, naturally, the American aircraft manufacturer wanted a slice of the cake, and for a market that was so critically important to both companies, Boeing didn't want to be left behind. Therefore, there were already minimal options that were made available to them. A clean sheet design would have taken an eternity, not only to design, but to eventually clear, train pilots, produce, and so much more. And frankly, by then, any customers that were eyeing up a replacement to their 737NGs or older would just head to the A320neo. In comes the 737 MAX, an aircraft with a more efficient and bigger engine, but one that didn't require a host of additional training for a pilot to make the switch even if at a later date it was confirmed that maybe they should have had that extra training. The 737 MAX was a quick fix to the NG, and one that would hopefully compete with Airbus's A320neo family. Boeing betted on the ease of production, prompt deliveries, and a whopping consumer interest to lead this plane to success. And they were successful in many means, with carriers racing to purchase their new plane, them achieving their goals in terms of production, and much more. But see, if you've been keeping a close ear out thus far in the video, you may have heard the words quick, easy sales and orders, all mentioned on numerous occasions. That's why now we move to the McDonnell Douglas merger. Through recent investigations, whistleblowers, documentaries, and much more, it's become evident that following the merger between Boeing and McDonnell Douglas, there was a major culture shift. A shift in the way planes were built, a shift in the routine day-to-day -day operations, and a whole lot more, especially the relationship between the workers on the ground and the executives. Instead of the Boeing culture remaining, which to reiterate was something that enabled it to become one of the most prestigious companies in the world. Wearing a Boeing shirt and signifying you were an employee was huge, and people often looked up to you. The culture of McDonnell Douglas, however, overpowered that Boeing culture that had been around for such a long period. 
and the focus was put on making a quick buck, cutting corners, and ensuring that the only thing that could be seen on Wall Street was that of green arrows. And ultimately, it's a mindset that can't be faulted in terms of ambition for a business overall. But keep in mind, when having a responsibility to keep millions upon millions safe, that does have to come first. Unfortunately for the Max, this wasn't the case. But you could argue, until the major incidents took place, from an outsider perspective, things were smooth sailing at Boeing. And that culture that we were witnessing, which was making a quick buck, certifying the aircraft very quickly, and seeing improvements on Wall Street, were all present. Until, though, the cookie crumbled. The race to certify, obtain profits, and get the plane delivered ultimately did lead to the max going wrong. Employees were overworked, encouraged to skip over key parts of building the aircraft and come back to them later, completely throwing out a process of producing an aircraft that had been so engraved and deep-rooted that it didn't make a whole lot of sense how Boeing were going about it. On top of this, concerns coming from directly employees were ignored by upper management, and the sole focus was just on pumping as many Max planes out at once, getting them delivered to the said customer, and seeing them flying. It was a culture widely that many employees, yes, disagreed with, but sadly, they were the ones taking the blame, and many did not feel that the culture was going to lead them to be able to speak up. They simply had to listen to their superiors. Rushing the plane into service, of course, caused many life-ending repercussions, and the standard should have never had this happen. Boeing, though, is rebuilding. They've cleaned house with their upper management, but they are still trying to recover from the events on the MAX that led them to get it so wrong. Of course, this year has been a monumental one for the American aircraft manufacturer, with the continued release of documentaries and investigations into what has happened at Boeing, which of course has not painted them with a good look. But I think you can definitely agree now that we fully understand the picture of what has truly gone on. Yes, there are more ins and outs, but the main idea of what happened has been understood and is hopefully being rectified at the American company. Now, the certification of aircraft has also been tightened tenfold. While the argument was always there that it should have been tight to begin with, it would seem that the trust with the FAA led to things being ignored, and relationships were actually the driving force into getting a plane certified. We've witnessed now aircraft delays worldwide, with every minute detail being examined, and rightfully so. This should be the standard. No one should ever have to go through the events of JT610 and ET302 again because of a company's complacency and the goal to roll in profits. What are your thoughts on the 737 MAX, and where do you think Boeing went wrong with the aircraft? You can drop your thoughts down below in the comments, as always, a great place to start a dialogue. We thoroughly appreciate you tuning into this video where we took a look at Boeing and the 737 MAX. We do look forward also to you joining us next time here on the channel for more aviation analysis content.